Hello everyone. I am Ashish Kapoor from Microsoft Research and uh, today I'm going to talk about high fidelity simulations and specifically making a case for why they are the next big thing there. Um, you know, you might have heard of uh, you know, uh, recent advances in uh, deep machine learning, specifically things like reinforcement learning. So I'm, I'm showing you a snapshot from Atari games. You know, we have had tremendous advances in you know, solving games, for instance, something like solving AlphaGo, or re more, most recently uh, solving you know, Pac-Man, and that's coming from Microsoft. Um, so if you think about it, these are video games, and we have AI technology, specifically machine learning technology, where you can attempt to solve some of these incredibly hard tasks at superhuman level. Right? The interesting thing is, while this is a great advance in the field of AI and ML, the big question is, how does it translate to real world? If I know how to play a game of Go or how to solve Pac-Man, can these technologies help me solve real hard world tasks? For instance, trying to drive, uh, fly a drone in an uncertain environment or trying to uh, you know, drive a car with pedestrians, etc. So one thing to notice that while these are great advances, they are closed worlds. When an AI agent needs to make the next move, they only need to worry about the next move in the game of Go or the next move in the game of Pac-Man. They don't have to worry about the exogenous variables, things like wind, things like pedestrian jumping in front of the car, or suddenly the, uh, you know, the, the lights changing, the signs, etc. So consequently, since this is a closed world and since we have access to these games, we have the luxury of uh, generating millions and millions of frame, you know, limited, like unlimited amount of data. And if you are familiar with some of these deep neural networks, you'll realize that they need a lot of data. Right? So consequently, it's a chicken and egg problem. I mean, we want to solve these hard AI ML tasks, but you know, sure, we have advances in terms of algorithms and there are all these platforms, but without existence of such labeled data, none of this is going to matter. So really, the bottleneck is going to be how do we get this real data? So what I'm going to propose is that let's consider these techniques, but now let's think about building a video game which would mimic reality. So specifically, so the whole idea is that we are going to think about building virtual worlds which mimic reality, the entire AI pipeline, in as much detail as possible so that you, know, you can actually hope that you can use these machine learning methods in real world. So the whole idea is very simple. It's a video game on steroids, as real as possible, except that game is being played by an AI agent. And while you know, playing uh, these games, these AI agents become, uh, you know, they, they basically experience a lot of different episodes. And based on th that experience, they can learn and adapt. So let me um, uh, you know, show you a demonstration from an open source project that we have from Microsoft researchers called Airsim. How many of you have heard about Airsim? OK, so, you know, so let, me, let me just go through, give you a very uh, brief introduction on what Airsim is. So, so when we think about you know, developing real-world technologies, you know, we have scenarios like that. Developing autonomous system in real world is incredibly hard. Trying to do tests like this takes immense amount of time and energy and uh, you know, manpower. So, you know, especially in Seattle, where we get like three months of good sunshine, you know, trying to do this thing is ex extremely expensive. So consequently, we embarked on a journey of, hey, let's try to do this in simulation first. Let's try to mimic reality as closely as possible, and let's solve those problems in simulation. And if that simulation is very close to real world, we can hope that some of these technologies would transfer. Right? So here is a snapshot from our open source simulator which is basically what I'm showing you is a self-driving car being simulated in a virtual world that was developed on top of Unreal Engine. There are other vehicles. What you are seeing is a camera being simulated, which is in front of the hood. And you can see the, the, uh, you know, what the camera is seeing. Since it's a simulation, we have the exact ground truth. So consequently, you, know, you, know, you have the exact segmentation. You know where the car is. You know how far each tree is. You know how far a pedestrian is. It doesn't need to be a car, it can be a drone. So in this case, a, a camera is being simulated on top of drone. This is what drone is seeing. This is the ground truth. It knows what it peaks pixel corresponds to. It knows exact the depth map. So now you can imagine that this drone, if allowed by 
you know, if, if an autonomous uh, stack drives this drone and does these experiments millions and millions of times, it's going to gather valuable experience. And that valuable experience can be then fed through a machine learning system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two or three different, uh, different kinds of uh, scenarios that we've tackled, and it'll give you a little bit more insight on how this could be used. So again, what is a simulation? As I said, it's a video game on steroids. When you think about a video game, you think about the actor. In this case, it can be a car, it can be a drone, it can be any robot, it can be an IoT device, it can be just a bunch of cameras, for instance. Then you have real-world physics, right? So when the drone moves in the environment, when the car moves in the environment, it needs to mimic how it would, how would, how it would uh, move in the real world. So there is a physics engine associated with it. It has models of wind, it has models of gravity, the magnetism, you know, all those details. It has simulations of sensors, each and every single sensor that you would put on a robot. Things like a camera, accelerometer, gyroscopes, magnetometer, barometer, all of those things are being simulated. And they are being simulated to an accuracy such that they would, you know, they mimic the behavior in the real world. So we are simulating all the gyroscopic drifts and all the noise and all the all the different noises that, that come through with these sensors. And it's a, it can be built on top of rendering engine. In this case, you're seeing Unreal Engine, but you know, it's possible to do it over Unity and other rendering engine as well. But you let the simulation run, and you can collect the data. Once you have the data, which is the goal that you squeezed out of the simulation, you can hope to uh, train machine learning and intelligence uh, methods on it. Again, when we think about simulations, we think about simulations of sensors. So in this case, as I said, we are trying to mimic each and every sensor. So what I'm going to show you here are a few statistics. So we have simulated barometer and a real barometer. And what we can do is we can collect traces and make sure the statistics of those traces match so that we can be sure of that if we have these sensors pipeline in an AI system, they, mi they mimic reality. We can do an end-to-end -end integration testing where we take a real drone and we put it in a simulation with exact configuration, all the physical properties, fly it in the real world, which is the magenta trajectory, and then you know, play back those signals and fly it in the real world. Right? And you make sure that the, that the um, simulation and reality m uh, match you know, very closely. So we have done some of these kind of integration testing. So let me you know, take a step back and walk you through three scenarios where you know, we can use the simulation. How many of you know about reinforcement learning, the, the whole uh, methodology between reinforcement learning? OK. At least few of you know. But in a, in a nutshell, it's a methodology where you have a machine learning agent that's taking all different actions it can take in the world. So for instance, if I have um, a self-driving car, it can decide to go straight. It can go decide to go left. It can go decide to go right. It can take various actions based on different scenarios. And if it's going to make a mistake, you say that, all right, you made a mistake. I'm going to give you a very high negative reward. You shouldn't do that again. But if it does the right thing, you give a positive reward. And if you keep doing these kinds of episodes over and over for, say, uh, you know, many million times, eventually there is a mechanism, there is a machine learning algorithm at the back end. It's trying to get that feedback and adapt to it. Right? So now you can imagine trying to do reinforcement learning in real world is very expensive with, with cars and drones. Because if they make a mistake, you're going to probably do a lot of damage. Right? But however, this is the same algorithm that's been used to train you know, AlphaGo, Atari games like chess and things like those. So the real big question is, how do you then translate to real world? So that's where the simulation comes in. So what I'm going to show you, so we have an agent. This is a car. It doesn't know anything about driving. All it has is access to images. And based on the image, the RGB bitmap, it needs to make a decision. The car is going to get a high reward if, if its velocity is you know, non-trivial. It's basically high. And it's going to give a high negative reward if it bumps into something, if it crashes, if it goes out of the sidewalk. Right? So let's, uh, let's see how that works. Right? So it's exploring. It doesn't know how to do things. Right? It made a mistake. So in high negative reward, go back. This is simulation. I have the luxury of making mistakes millions and millions of times without ever incurring real-world costs. Right? However, you cannot, cannot expect this kind of algorithm to work in real world. Right? And eventually, after you do you know, many, many iterations, it starts to get the hang of, all right, this is what I actually need to do in order to get the high reward. Right? So, and eventually, you know, it basically tries to solve these kinds of episodes. So you can see how you know, we are utilizing some of the recent advances in machine learning, but actually 
using high fidelity simulations in order to, um, in order to uh, solve real world tasks. The second example that I'm going to talk about is more in the lines of supervised machine learning, which is the more traditional form of uh, you know, uh, learning that, uh, that you guys might be familiar of. So the whole idea is that if I have a bunch of labeled images, I can train a neural network. Right? So in this case, what I'm showing you is a very bare bones pipeline for a self-driving car. Right? You have some kind of a sensor, in this case, a stereo vision camera. And Based on the stereo vision camera, you know you can generate some depth map. This depth map goes into a mapping system, which is SLAM, if you're familiar with it. And then based on that, you can plan. Each of these boxes, you can think of it as a machine learning system at, or an AI system. But however, let's just focus on one, which is the stereo um, uh, box. What it does is it takes a stereo pair and generates a depth map. It just tells me how far things are. That's all. And we are going to use machine learning to do this. right? So. One easy way to do this is I, again, use a simulation. But what I have done is I have instantiated a stereo pair on the, on, on the car. So you, you can see the left frame and the right frame. And since, since this is a simulation, I have the ground truth depth map. I exactly know how far each pixel is. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this car drive. Right? And this, since this is a simulation, I can perfectly drive this car without bumping into anything. But as I'm driving, I'm going to record my left frame and the right frame and the ground truth depth map. And I do that for hours. That is go going to give me a million, possibly more frames. And once I have this data, I basically train a neural network. So input to the neural network are these left and right frames, and the output is the depth map. Right? And you train this thing, right? and you have a neural network where you can then feed any left and right frames, and out comes the depth map. Very simple idea. Right? The good thing is that you do it, and then you can try it on real-world images to see if this translates. So the great thing is that you know, since this is high-fidelity simulation, a lot of these kinds of machine learning tasks translate really well to the real world. Right? And, this, so, and the thing is that when you think about power of simulation, it's not just limited to just machine learning. You can do some fantastic things uh, with simulation. So here what I'm showing you. It's, some kind, it's like very bare bones pipeline of how a self-driving uh, uh, car might be designed. You, know, you, have, you have to define the architecture of, of your car, for instance. The next generation of cars are going to have probably 250 or more sensors. Are you going to build every single car and test it and then figure out if that's the right configuration? Probably not. That's where simulation comes in. I can take a car, a chassis, and I can instantiate all different kinds of sensors all over the place and let it run in simulation and see how well it works. Once I'm happy with the build, that's when I go and build a, you know, a, a simulation. Oops, let me go back. Same thing, you, know, you, can, you can utilize deep learning to build things like you know, pedestrian detectors, sign detectors, street, uh, you know, street light detectors, all kinds of different things, all kinds of different tasks that are very important in, in, in your autonomous systems. Then you can integrate, then you can build the entire end-to-end -end system, and you can actually simulate the end-to-end -end system to see if it works or not. Right? So there are many ways in which simulations can be used very actively throughout. Here is another example where I have basically taken the same reinforcement learning algorithm, but now it's instantiated on a drone. And the goal of this drone is to learn to follow these power lines. You know, why, why do you want to do that? Because, you know, again, you know, power line inspection is a, is a pretty important problem that you want to solve. Um, here, we can leverage simulations plus machine learning. Again, it's doing reinforcement learning. When it does the right thing, when it follows the power line nicely, it gets high reward. Whenever it drifts away or bangs into some other things, you get a very negative reward. Keep running this thing in simulation in cloud for millions and millions of iterations, and suddenly you have a model that works in the real world. The great thing with these simula simulation scenarios are that you can use third-party content. Right? You don't have to create all those 3D virtual worlds on your own. What I'm showing you is 100 square miles of New Zealand that was created by Epic Games. And what we are doing is we have instantiated our drones, our robots with all the sensors, and we are flying through that. We can use this third-party environment to actually learn. You can do an you know, interesting amount of things. And great thing about you know, some of these technologies is that you, know, you, can, you can have detailed um, you know, world at, uh, you know, at a level that wasn't really you know, possible before. 
So when we think about simulation-centric AI for robotics, let me just show you the statistics. Why does this matter and why do I believe this is the future? So I showed you the first slide, Atari games and AlphaGo. You know, the number of data points that you're pushing through any of these machine learning, deep machine learning algorithm is immense. For instance, for Atari games, you are looking at pushing through 200 million frames. And similar order of uh, frames for AlphaGo as well, Pac-Man. At 30 frames per second, 200 million frames is 77 days worth of compute. I mean, what are you going to do about it? I mean, are you going to do that much? Uh, and especially with, with the real world, are you going to just drive your car for 77 days and to get all that data? Possibly not. You need simulation. And you need simulation in parallel, massive parallel simulations that would enable you to, to solve these tasks. Right? So I will conclude with one, uh, uh, you know, one real-world study that we are working on. So what you're seeing here is, is, uh, is a collaboration in, with the University of Southern California where we are trying to identify poaching activity happening in, uh, in African savanna. So this is an African savanna. This is real-world footage, which is captured with a camera on a drone. And what you're seeing is these white pixels. So these are animals and you know, humans and poachers. And the whole goal is to build a detection system because you're flying these drones at night and you want to detect any kind of human movement because that might be uh, co uh, you know, correlating with the, uh, with the poaching activity. You have to do this via machine learning AI methods. But where are you going to get this kind of data? Are you going to you know, park yourself in an African savanna for months and then try to capture this data? Not. So what we're going to do is we're going to create simulation. So here, the entire African savanna is being created in simulation with animated animals and poachers, and we are simulating IR cameras. And now you can do is, you can now generate artificial data that then you can combine with real world footage that you have, uh, you have captured, and then build these detection recognition models at a scale that was not possible before. Um, we have a technical report coming out on this, which uh, where you know, we basically are showing that augmenting simulation with real world data boosts your recognition performances very significantly. Right? So when we think about high fidelity simulation, it's a descriptive way to represent reality. As I said, it's video game on steroids, basically, except the video game is being played by a software. And by playing this game on and on for millions of times, you can expect the system to learn the fantastic things that weren't possible before. And the whole, the whole vision is that you know, once you're happy with your model, you can do all kinds of validation and testing. And then you just flip a bit, and the entire code base then goes on the real world, and, the, and the, your real world robot then takes care of things. As I said, AirSim is an open source project. There are several thousand you know, users of it. It's an active community of researchers and developers. You are welcome to go. All of the stuff that I talked about is publicly available, and then you can read about, about it. Here is a, a URL. And uh, with that, I'll conclude. I'm happy to take any questions and, uh, and happy to discuss more. Thank you.